Hello, it's Sarah, and today I want to talk about a subject that has nothing to do with crafting, and it is addiction. And I wanted to talk about it because it is a huge part of my life. I am not addicted to anything but crafting, um, <laughs> but there are those in my, li my life that have issues with crafting. Uh, alcohol and drugs and how it affects me and the people in their lives is what I, what I wanted to talk about because um, so I'm a daughter of my dad was an alcoholic and he was very uh, in and out of our lives um, at, by, by the end of his life we had a pretty good we had a good relationship and that's because I learned how to set boundaries and he respected that that's the way it has to be um, you know so we got there and it took time and it took work uh, but I loved him very very much he was a great guy and without the booze he would have I would love to have seen what he could have done um, but he he devastated his life. He was destitute by the end. Anywho, then, because I do believe it is um, a disease, and that is hard, was hard for me to come to grips with because um, I don't have the disease. I don't have that genetic thing, um, that chemistry inside my brain, because I did drugs. When I was a kid, I grew up in the 80s, um, and, and actually my dad turned me on to cocaine when I was 17 and my brother was 15 and he cut lines out on his glass coffee to table and told us it would, was the best we'd ever do. So that just gives you a little insight into, uh, how, just how dysfunctional it was. Um, but I never, I didn't continue to take drugs. Um, I mean, you know, I just dabbled in them as a teenager pretty much. And then once I had my kids, I didn't, I didn't do anything anymore. I quit smoking when I was like 21. I used to smoke cigarettes, but anyway, and not that there's anything wrong with that. And I don't even drink now either. Cause like Joe doesn't drink, Joe doesn't do anything. He's never done anything. Um, but, uh, that's not to say, I, I do love a cold beer from time to time and, um, yeah, I, I like to have a cocktail, but we just don't do it very often at, at home. Um, but if we go out, um, I will indulge. And um, my brother, so my brother is where it, it went. He has the genetic, uh, you know, whatever. He's an addict. He ended up doing heroin. And... Uh, has been in and out, up and down, all around um, in that four years. He turns 50 this year. And I don't, I want to say he's only had 10, literally like 10 clean years out of his life. And that's been maybe a five year spread, a three and a two. Um, but relapse is part of the disease. So, um, and then pills, narcotics, uh, um, oxycodone is basically pill form of heroin. So if anyone you know is on oxy, basically you can consider them doing heroin. Um, and uh, people on pills think it's less, you know, stigmatic or whatever. There's less of a stigmatism, stig whatever that word is I'm trying to say, stigma. But it is basically the same thing. The, the addictive powers of that drug are the same as heroin. You get sick when you want to get off it. Um, the other one is Xanax. Xanax is a really hardcore drug and I know people take it for anxiety. I've taken anxiety medicines before but I've never taken Xanax. My, my aunt took it one time and she got way loopy and it, it messes you up. Like and people talk, like on the housewives, you'll hear people say, oh, take a Xanax. No, I would never take a Xanax because if you're predisposed to addiction, Xanax is not a good way to go. And it's not a good look. 
I don't know. I mean, this is my opinion, my personal experience. If you like Xanax and it works for you, then you can take it. Um, honestly, I don't know <clears throat> why it's even a drug like that people take because I've seen how it messes people up. Uh, and then... Um, any of the downers, and I, my brother could give you the total education, like he's a pharmacist. He knows what every drug does. And it's pretty, like, it's crazy. It's crazy how they know. Um, I guess Valium and um, Vicodin and those are all, because Xanax is different. Xanax isn't a downer. It's more of a whatever. Anyway, all right. Then... About two weeks ago, almost, no, it's only a week and a half now, uh, detectives pulled up to my house and made it very, very clear that there is an issue at my house now. And so uh, um, that's what I've been doing for the past week and a half. And I haven't really had a crafty mojo, as you can understand, um, although I'm starting to feel it again. It is coming back. I feel much better. I went to counseling. Um, I was thinking about trying Al-Anon this time, but I think I'm going to be okay. Um, we just need to take a few steps, and the rest is up to that person. Um, but my husband, of course, is brokenhearted. He's never had, I mean, he's been through it with me, with my family. Um, but he's never had someone so close be affected the way we do now. And, um, you know, like I said, I believe that it is a lifelong uh, battle. It's a lifelong process. And when you start to forget who you are, it will come back to bite you. My brother has done that many times. He's a handsome, charismatic, fun person to be around. And when he would get around people who were just having a drink for fun, he had to remember, I can't have a drink for fun. And you slip sometimes, and the next thing leads to the next thing leads to the next thing. And it's not fun. It's not fun to watch or to love someone who has that problem. So, anywho, uh, that's what I wanted to tell you guys. And I'm not telling you this to be dramatic or um, gossipy or whatever. I don't even want to tell you this. <laughs> I don't want to tell you this, but it is a part of my life. It's a, been a part of my life for as long as I can remember. And it has affected me. It's affected me in a lot of ways. I had anxiety for a long time, but I've gotten that under control um, because chaos was a part of my life and um, not knowing, no consistency. I love consistency and that's what Job brought me and that's what my little home is here and so this is got to go <laughs> um, because we can't have that. We can't have the, the no trust. Um, in our own home, it's it's just, it's, you know, can't do that. But um, it affects you. It does. So uh, I'm just telling you this because get help for yourself. The person will get help if they want to get help. I have made lists. Do this. Do one, two, three, four, five, and you'll be good. And they don't do it. Um, I would do it, but they don't, for some reason, want to do it. Anyway, uh, but get help for yourself. Go to counseling, journal, do whatever you need to do. Stay healthy. Get I joined the gym, so I've been going to the gym. Um, and it feels good. It does. It feels good. Um, what else? Just uh, get out in the fresh air. Take walks. And Anyway, you guys know what feels good for you. Um, and I need to talk about it a little bit, so I'm just telling you guys. But I think I'm going to be okay. It was a rough week there. And Joe went to Alaska, <laughs> like that week. He had to go to Alaska. So um, he's back now, and we've talked about it. And um, 
you know, it's it's a process, but we have each other. We're going to be we're going to stick together on this and it'll be okay. And I respect him so much that and he respects me that we are not going to pull each other apart over anything. You have to, you know, that's important too. Don't let it devastate your relationships. Um you know, it's not worth it. You have to think of it logically. Yeah, I've been angry and I've blown up and I mean, you go through phases, but we're going to address this with love and um, logic. So you have to do it with love and logic together. You can't just do it out of, the, out of your heart because you need the logic part too. You need the, you know, um, so... Uh, just if anyone out there has this issue in their lives, it's okay to cut the cord. It's okay to say, I've done all I can do because it's not your problem. They have to address it. They have to work on it and make it a daily thing. Not us. We don't have to. I don't want to ask him, have you gone to a meeting today? I don't want to be. It's not my job. Um, so, and I'm not gonna, um, been there, done that, not gonna do it, uh, but I still love him and I'm never gonna stop and I'll always want the best for him and I will be there if he needs to talk, but on my terms, on, I have boundaries and, um, so that's what you need to do is get help for yourself, make sure you're okay and you're um, not putting yourself out there just to be used and abused. Don't do it. You don't need to do that because it, it'll happen. They'll take you for a ride. Um, and so that's really all I wanted to say. Um, but I do, th I'll, I'll come back and I'll share a little project that I did. Uh, but hopefully this can help someone. And, um, you know, I really, I don't want to you guys leave your comments to, um, if you have something you want to share with me, you could PM me, private message me. Um, but I don't want this to be a bunch of drama. Um, and because everyone has different feel, it's like talking about religion, you know, I mean, it, or politics. It's, it's a hard one to address. Um, but I hope that I've given you strength enough to know that, it's not you, it's them. And you can love them all you want, but you don't have to do it for them and you don't have to be in it. You can take a break. You can cut off ties and say, I need a break and I'll talk to you in a year. <laughs> so, um, you know, and, pr and pray for them. If that's what works for you, it doesn't work for me. I don't pray for anybody. Uh, but do what makes you feel better. All right, and that's why now everyone should know that's why this is called My Serenity Crafts, my channel, because this gives me serenity. It gives me such happiness, and um, I love you guys for being there and sharing this with me, the good stuff with me. So I just wanted to let you know where I've been and what I've been up to. Um, working on, we're getting there, and we're, we're going to be okay. All right? So I'll be back with a little project share. All right, thanks for watching.